I just returned from China. And this was right after Anthony Blinken, just after Janet Yellen came to China. Then, right before Anthony Blinken came to China, surprisingly enough or unsurprisingly enough, nobody was really interested in this diplomacy, at least. You know, there wasn't a lot of optimism among those I was with. But, you know, Blinken came and went, and although there has been all this talk about overcapacity in China and sanctions coming on China, there's still this narrative being pushed around by the United States of trying to break up Russia and China. Basically, targeting China for its so-called support of the conflict. The United States will take care of it themselves if China does not fix this problem for the United States. Now, Scott, we just talked about Israel's waning legitimacy in terms of its status in the world. The United States appears to be going through this big time as well in parallel. I'm wondering your thoughts about this latest diplomatic game, we could call it, that Blinken and the United States have been playing with China, and of course, it always goes back to Russia as well. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, it's reflective of an act of desperation on the part of the United States. You know, we said the same thing to Russia. We're going to sanction you to death. We're going to put on these overwhelming sanctions that are going to collapse your economy. Don't go into Ukraine. It'll be all over. It'll be bad for you. And the sanctions never achieved what they were supposed to. In fact, they backfired. You know, you know the Chinese a heck of a lot better than I do. I would imagine that China will have fairly strategic thinkers. What I mean by that is they don't. They're not taken by surprise by very much. They consider all options, all possibilities, especially those that are linked to public statements, declaratory policy statements made by potential adversaries like the United States. The notion of American sanctions against China is not a new notion. We have sanctions, active sanctions, ongoing against China on a number of fronts right now. But what we haven't done to date is sanction Chinese financial institutions. In order for this to work, you have to believe that China has extraordinarily fragile financial institutions and that China's relationship with the world is really built more on eggshells than tempered steel. And that's just not the case. China has been involved in belt and road initiatives, $10 trillion or more, in terms of global investments. They've built up global supply chains that are unmatched. They tap into just about every aspect of the global economy. They have far more global resilience than the United States does. It's not the Chinese yuan or renminbi that's in a global crisis. It's the United States dollar that is. So for Blinken to come in and threaten China is just absurd in the extreme. China is a responsible nation. They have made strategic commitments to Russia, not just in private, but in public. Does Blinken think that he can actually get Xi Jinping to reverse course on publicly stated policy goals and objectives regarding Russia, the strategic relationship between the two? No, no. And if you take a look at what Russia and China have been doing for the past two years, they've been broadening and deepening their economic interaction. We're not going to sanction China into doing anything. The hardest decisions, and we talked about this with Russia, you know. The hardest decisions are those decisions that create pain for you, and so you avoid those decisions because you don't want the pain. Nobody wants to voluntarily suffer pain. But like anything, when you're confronted with the inevitability of the pain, then you adjust to adapt to the pain and get through the pain. That's what Russia had to do with the sanctions that we put on it. China will do the same thing. It's not like China is going to collapse like a house of cards because the United States is threatening sanctions again. First of all, China understands its economy better than the United States, just like Russia understands its own economy. I had to laugh again today at people who, 
Remember when they were talking about the oil cap and restricting Russian oil? I said to every one of them, I think Russia knows the oil industry, especially the Russian oil industry, and especially how the Russian oil industry interfaces with the global oil industry a hell of a lot better than anybody in your organization. And yet, they're out there making proclamations and poo-pooing this, saying that's Russian propaganda, that's this, that, the other thing. But finally, they had to admit that the price cap has had no effect on the Russians, that the Russians have just built a global ghost fleet of tankers that operate outside of Western control of Western insurance companies, delivering oil now in a way that can't be monitored by the West effectively. So we have no clue what they're doing. And I'm here to predict that if we sanction the Chinese, we'll be doing the same thing. The damn Chinese economy keeps growing. It doesn't shrink. What does shrink is us, because the sanctions will backfire on us like we wouldn't believe. The Chinese will turn the tables on us. We'll find ourselves with a dollar shortage or a dollar crisis based upon the collapse of global confidence in the dollar. China may dump all the treasuries that they bought. They won't buy up any more debt. We're just literally committing suicide instead of the smartest policy, which is to say Russia won in Ukraine. We can't stop it. So let's mitigate the damage. Let's do damage control. Let's contain this beast and pull back and see if we can regroup. But we just keep doubling down on stupid. This is like being in Las Vegas, and I just put my kid's college fund on the table, put it all on red, and it went black. So in my infinite wisdom, I'm taking the mortgage and putting it on the table too, doubling down on stupid. Odds are, they're going to take my mortgage too, and that's what the United States is doing. We keep, we're just putting everything there, and right now with China, we're playing the sanctions card one more time, one too many times. We're going to bet on the sanctions, and they're going to fail. China's just better at this game than we are, because we're reacting. The Chinese have been waiting for this, so they have a plan, and you're going to find that as soon as we do something, they're going to do what John Boyd, 32 and Boyd of the OD A Loop fame, you're familiar with the OD A Loop. Boyd said, if I go head to head with any fighter pilot, I will turn things around and shoot him down by causing him to react to me. So we're going to come in thinking we're in the driver's seat. We're going to put sanctions on, but because China's anticipated the sanctions, they're going to hit us with a move now that has us react in a way that we didn't anticipate, and they're going to own the cycle, and they're going to win. And that's what's going to happen here, if we get into a sanctions-based conflict with China. Yeah, I mean, in 2023, and this will be ongoing, China's biggest oil supplier was Russia, which surpassed Saudi Arabia. That's a byproduct of what the United States and, of course, its European vassals did to Russia with the sanctions. And you're exactly right, Scott, and China doesn't have to do that much. When I was there, and also just reading the materials, and during this trip, I was around a lot of communists. Oh, no. But actually, that's who's in the government. The Communist Party of China is the government. So I was around a good number of them. And one of the things that's very stark is that there's a lot of discipline in the policy orientation of the party. The party is the leadership, and whatever policies the party has in place, that's what people follow, and that's what people know. That's what they implement. And what is so interesting, I was in Jilin province on the Korean border, also borders Russia, and it's quite clear that even in just the last several years, that increased oil trade with Russia has produced enormous opportunities for enhanced investment for this little province. This little province, their leaders are building the high-speed rails, they're building the electric vehicles in large numbers in this very tiny province because in large part of the ability to enhance manufacturing through this oil trade, through this partnership with Russia. So this has huge ramifications. 
And China doesn't even have to do that much. If China is sanctioned, they're going to do what they've been doing, which is investing more, becoming more self-reliant. This is how China's economy is shaking out now. There's all this panic in the Western media about, oh, China's collapsing. Its economy is collapsing. If you look at the numbers of where they're investing, it's not collapsing. So anyway, any final thoughts, Scott? No, we live in a changing world. I'll just throw this out at the end. The United States, in its infinite desire for creating chaos and anarchy, just successfully led the charge to get Russia kicked out of the World Trade Organization. Now, people say, well, so what? Well, the WTO has these wonderful rules and mechanisms that allow countries to resolve trade disputes in a peaceful, legal manner. So now Russia is no longer a member of the WTO. So now Russia can say, you know what? We don't recognize WTO. So what we're going to do is stop exporting anything to anybody. Whoa. But that means that a good part of the world economy would collapse. Russia has energy, grain, and many resources. We're playing games in an anarchic way that I think is going to come back and haunt us. So we need to start being a little more cautious and a little more reserved in how we go about these things. But I don't see that happening. So buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Thanks, Scott.